I'm going to go ahead and get started. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's start off and, and uh, go to the Lord in a word of prayer. No, <laughs> Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the fellowship that we share, Lord. We thank you for the, the conversations that we can have, for the love that we share in you, and uh, for every member of the, the body of Christ that you've put here in this church. And I just ask that as we open your word together this morning, that you would help us to come to a better understanding of who you are, all that you've done for us, and that we would come away better able to, to serve you and, and take your word to others and, and proclaim your, your message of truth to the world around us that so desperately needs it. Thank you. And we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. We were singing this morning in the first service, in the, the first song we were singing, Come Alive, and um, it, the, the lyrics, uh, I just I was thinking through them and, and trying to think about the, uh, what we've been studying here. And it says, we know that you are God, yours is the victory. Uh, we know that there is more to come, more we may not, 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 may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. And it goes into the, we'll call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dry bones, come alive. And that's really what we've been talking about is, is God uh, using uh, faith as a, as a means to bestow his blessings, his working within us. Um, it's, it's the faith that, that he's given. We've looked at, we looked at that last week. Um, we, we looked at the connection between uh, grace and, and faith. Uh, we went to Hebrews 1 and looked at how Jesus is the, the author and, and perfecter, the, the beginning and the end. Um, in, in Romans 12, we looked at how God gave uh, a measure of faith, or, or God gives a measure of, of faith, that he's in control, that he is, um, he is the one who is, is determined, and he's the one who, who gives uh, faith, and that um, it's a, a, a mode or a, a measure or a conduit uh, which he uses to bestow other other blessings, and then we, we went to Romans three, and we looked at because of those truths um, that that boasting is is, is excluded, um, that it's it's God that is doing the work, um, and yet He is He is working through us. And I just thought that that song when it, it talks about um, the the with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. And then we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. And it's really talking about God doing the work in us and then that outworking through us and that we are then to take that word to others to call them uh, to repentance in Christ. And, and it really beautifully illustrates these truths that we've been talking about and how God um, uses faith uh, in, in us to, to reach out to to others. Um, we left off talking about the balance between the... Uh, the two components of faith, the intellectual uh, component, but also the, the, uh, the trust, the carrying out and acting on that. Uh, so let's turn to, to Matthew chapter 21. I'm going to read the, the parable of the two sons. This passage really highlights exactly what we left off talking about um, that if you believe something to be true, but, but don't act on it, that you're, you're not acting in your faith, and that you can believe something to be true that isn't, but then you're, you're acting in, in foolishness. And so this uh, helps us to understand both, both components of faith. So would someone like to read in Matthew chapter 21, uh, verses uh, 28 through 32? Oh, go ahead. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of heaven at the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. 
but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. So we see there, I think, uh, in verse 32, kind of the, the summary that the application of, of this parable that, um, that Jesus said, for when John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, uh, but tax collectors and harlots believed in him. And so we, we see there the obvious connection to the belief part of faith, that we have to have that understanding of what the truth of God's word says. We have to have that, that didactic knowledge, knowing the facts about what, what God's word says and understanding them. But then we also see the application that we have to act on that. We have to trust in um, what we, we know or what we believe. And that's where Jesus finishes up the, uh, the parable and says, and when you saw it, you did not afterward relent uh, or regret it and, and believe him. And, and so we see that there has to be that, um, th that change in us and th that affects the, the way we act. And we, we briefly mentioned last week that, that that comes in the form of repentance. And that's why so often throughout scripture, we see repent and believe. That was Jesus's message when he came to, to earth. That was the first um, real part of his, his ministry uh, recorded early in the gospels was, was repent and believe for the kingdom of, of God is at hand. Uh, we saw that with, with John the Baptist preaching repentance because uh, Jesus was on the way. We, we saw it in, when we looked at the Old Testament passages about uh, turning from sin and turning towards God. Um, and then we, we also uh, see that with, uh, with the apostles throughout the New Testament. And, and even looking forward, um, we mentioned last week, if we look at Revelation chapter 12, when we see the, um, when we see the, the angel uh, flying and preaching uh, the eternal gospel of, of repentance. So there's that, that balance between understanding what God's word says and, um, and then acting on it in, in repentance. And so we've looked at the two components of faith, um, but let's look at what the Bible says as far as what, what, how it defines faith. What, what is faith? And we've taken a little while to get there, um, but, but let's turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. We're not going to read the whole chapter, although I think most of you know, I think that we, we know this chapter is the Hall of Faith, so it would be very applicable to go through and and read and, and study each of these situations. I promise I won't do that, um, but, um, but, but it, it gives us a very broad um, overview of faith, but also some very specific things that we can take away. So somebody would like to read verses uh, one through six to get us started. Um, go ahead. Now faith is being sure of what we're not for, and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed in God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than King did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man, and when God spoke well of his offerings, <clears throat> and by faith, he still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life, for he did not experience death. He could not be found, because God had taken him, taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who are seek him. Thank you. So I want to draw our attention to uh, verses one and, and verses six here um, to, to understand what, what faith is, and then we'll, we'll briefly uh, do an overview of the rest of the chapter. But um, faith is the, the substance, uh, the realization of things hoped for. Uh, I think Caleb read it said being sure of the, the things hoped for, the evidence uh, or, or confidence of, of things not seen. And so it's, it's trusting in, in things that we cannot necessarily uh, see or, or um, that we not necessarily can't prove uh, in, uh, in, in a temporal and a physical world. Because remember, these are our spiritual things. This is how God is, is, is working through us. Um, but there are two things there that we need to be uh, aware of. It's, it's being sure. Uh, it is it's confidence. It is uh, something that we, um, 
we have a surety in it's not something that is, is transient that is, is fluctuating that uh, it is a uh, an assurance from God. Um, and then the, the second part there in, in verse six, um, it, is, uh, it is that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Okay, and that goes back to what we were studying in Ephesians a few weeks ago when we looked at depravity and we looked at the, uh, the fallenness of man and our own sin nature and how we're set against God. And it makes sense then that without that change in the heart that comes through faith, that we cannot please God. Um, so without faith, it is impossible to, to please him. And so faith is um, trusting or believing in, in something you, you cannot exp explicitly prove. Okay, that was what we get from verse one. It is the, um, the change in our hearts that allows us to, um, to, to please God. So there's a, that change that comes about when we are saved. Um, if we go back to what we read, uh, what we studied last week, it is a, a gift by God. It's the, the means by which God gives uh, blessing, uh, his blessings to sinners. Uh, it's a demonstration of his power, of his character, of, of who he is. And, and as we'll see, it, it, it brings together and unites and, and builds up the, the body. And I think that's a, a big part of what this chapter is about. It goes on from, from talking of, about Enoch. Uh, and then in verse seven, it talks about Noah. Uh, it talks about Abraham in, in verses eight through 10. And then again, in verses 17 through 19, uh, Sarah in verses 11 and 12, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, uh, Joshua, Rahab, and then into onto Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and a variety of other other prophets. Um, and we can be thankful that we're not going to go into each of those because we wouldn't get back to Ephesians for several more months. Um, uh, but and then it it, the, it closes in in going uh, in talking about the dead being raised to life. Um, it goes through the suffering that that these saints went through because of their faith, through trials, mocking, scourging, chains, imprisonment, stoning, executions, being sawed in two, temptations, torment, and, and wandering, homelessness. And then the closing in verse 39, and it says, and all of these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So we see there that faith is the, something that unites all of us, okay? And not being made perfect apart from us, okay? Faith is something that is given by God and, and it is common to all believers and it unites us um, and, it, and it gives us all that same promise in Christ of future blessings, okay? And that is the connection to Ephesians that we're going to, um, to look at uh, in, in coming weeks is the, the future blessings that we have in, um, in Christ. But that, that idea that, that faith unites us is, is a central um, component of, um, of the importance of faith in our lives. So look at this uh, a little bit further. Um, I want, want to turn to, uh, to 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, in writing to Timothy, in, in 1 Timothy, um, will bring together a lot of the same components of faith that we have we've looked at already, um, but also stress that, um, that, that component of, of it unifying and building up the, the body of, of Christ. So what do you want to read 1 Timothy chapter 1 for us? 17 verses, so a little bit longer. Try and go ahead. 17. Yep. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God, our Savior, and Christ Jesus, our hope. To Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. As I urged you when I went to Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus, so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines anymore, any longer, or to devote themselves to myths or endless genealogies. Such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from the pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. Some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. 
They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they're talking about or what they say or what they so confidently affirm. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not of the righteous, but for the lawbreakers, the rebels, and the ungodly and the sinful, the unholy, the irreligious, for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the sexual immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glorious glory of the blessed God, which is he, which he entrusted to me. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considers me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are, that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, and only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Brian. So we see there in the closing verses, in, in verses 15 and 16, um, that, that what, what God is, is doing uh, is very purposeful. And we see that throughout this passage, the, the stress on, on faith. And we'll go back and look at, look at uh, those in just a second. But so this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And then ends by saying, now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God, who alone be, is, is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And so we see there the, the kind of twofold purpose that God has. Um, and the first is the application to us as sinners, that his purpose is to save sinners. Came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. But then the, the, the ultimate uh, goal of doing that is to bring glory to God. Um, and it, it closes in talking about who God is, about his eternal characteristics, um, but it says be honor and glory forever and ever. So we see God's purpose um, in, in this passage and in, in describing the, uh, the impact of, of faith. And we, we do see throughout the passage that uh, Paul continually comes back and, and stresses talking about faith. He opens up and says to Timothy, a true son in the faith. I mean, it's talking about, uh, there's a familial connection. There is, uh, we are part of the, the family of God united by faith. Um, and, and we see that, that faith unites. And then he goes in to this, uh, this passage, and I love this passage about no other doctrine, um, but, but what he's talking about here um, is, is that faith builds up the body of Christ. And we see the connection a couple of times here between faith and, and truth. Remember, if we, uh, we've, we've gone to our, um, our, our uh, church constitution uh, uh, several times, and we've talked about how uh, it is in connection with tr divine truth so as to secure our voluntary, voluntary obedience to the gospel, and that its proper evidence is found in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. And we've talked about that connection between faith and truth built on the truth of the word of God. Um, and, and that, uh, and, and Paul here in writing Timothy makes that point, but also said that is how God builds up the unity of the body of Christ. In verse four, it says that, um, uh, give no heed to, to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Brian, are you reading the New American Standard? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you're NIV, saying NIV. I'm sorry. NIV. I think it, that said that advances God's work, which is of faith. Okay, so so God is working through faith to build up the body of Christ, to to edify, uh, to 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 build up, to advance His purpose in bringing bringing sinners to repentance, and by doing so, to bring uh, glory and honor and praise to Himself. 
Um, and then uh, again, in verse five, we see that faith is, is uh, sincere. It's unhypocritical, as uh, some versions say. It's, it's real. It is based in the, the truth of, of God's word. For those of you who were in the, in the first service, um, we then see a, a section that goes right along with what Pastor Bill was preaching this morning. I'm not going to go through that, but the direct connection to, to Romans chapter one um, is talking about um, the sinfulness of, of mankind. And then in verse 11, he, he closes that chapter by talking about how uh, salvation is according to the glorious gospel, of the blessed God, uh, which he committed to my trust. And God commits his gospel to us. He is the one who, who gives it. He's the one who uh, helps us to, to understand it. He's the one who quickens our heart to, um, to trust in him. And, and that faith is, is the conduit by which he, um, he does that. And, and then we see um, the beautiful uh, uh, conclusion there. Um, and it says, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a, or a persecutor, an insolent uh, or violently arrogant man, uh, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. We see that faith is the means by which God changes us from sinners, stuck in that whole list and litany of sins, deserving of death and condemnation, okay? and through faith, by his grace, he changes us to believers alive in him, saved. To bring him glory. Dave, you have a question? Um, when you were back in Hebrews, yeah. When we get down to reading Hebrews 10 and 11, and then I come to 12, it tells me how to win the race of faith. Yeah. So. Uh... <laughs> I can read it for you. No, that's okay. I'm, I thought I had it in my notes actually, but um, hold on a second. I'm sure I had it. it might have been last week's. Um, yeah, so we, we went actually to Hebrews 12 last week. So, um, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set. That, that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yeah, and that's that's to the race. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what we were talking about, you know, last week. That he's the the uh, the author and finisher. He's the the originator. It comes from him. He gives it to us. Okay, faith is the, the conduit by which he gives blessing. Um, and then he's the perfecter. He's the one who's perfect. I have to stop there and I have to say, Lord, am I matching up? Am I walking the walk? Will I be able to sit down next to you? You know, in my mind and heart, that's the way I look at it. The finisher of faith. Yeah. And and it's only it's it's only through it because there there is nothing that, that we as sinful human beings can ever will ever could ever do to earn that, to, um, to deserve that. Uh, and, uh, that. And that's going back to Ephesians chapter one, talking about the holiness of God, his perfection, and, and how stark that contrast between us and, and him is. Absolutely. Thank you for Yep, absolutely. I love that. I love that whole passage between the, uh, Hebrews 10 and Hebrews 12, and, yeah. and it's all talking about faith and um, I thought about going back through that whole section, but again, time-wise, we want to at least try to stay loosely connected to Ephesians somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> at least read the last chapter. Right? That's right. We'll, we'll, we'll get back into Ephesians next week, I promise. Um, so, so we've looked at, at a lot of the uh, the components of, of faith. We've looked at... Um, at what it is now, and um, we look at, at what it does, um, but let's look at the, uh, the means by which God gives it. Um, so let's go to, uh, to Romans chapter 10. 
And if someone would like to read, um, again, another a uh, little bit longer passage, verses 1 through 17. Lord. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. <clears throat> For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And how then <clears throat> will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Thank you. So we see here, and, and I wanted to start at the beginning of that chapter because Paul describes his heart. He describes his desire that that people would be saved and brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they may be saved paul's talking about his his own desire his own uh passion for spreading god's word for taking uh the, the word of god uh to um uh to the jews and um and he, he says my heart's desire and prayer for israel is that they may be saved so that's kind of the background that's the basis for, for this whole passage. He then goes into some uh, kind of deeper uh, doctrinal stuff there in, in the next few verses. But then we come to Romans 10, 9, which is one of the most common verses that we use in, in evangelism and, and children's ministry in explaining salvation. And again, we see the connection there uh, between the components of faith, the, the knowledge, the understanding of, of the didactic truth, but also the, the trust and the, the outworking um, the action component of it when when he says that if you confess with your mouth so there's the, the outworking the trust the action um, the, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart so there's the, the knowledge the understanding uh, that the God that God has raised him from the dead you will be saved and then uh, skipping down just a, a cute a couple of, of verses we see just the, the beautiful um, truth that, that shows the, the balance that that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. And then we see him go into several questions. Okay. Shall they call? Shall they believe? Uh, shall they hear? Um, and, and how, how that will, will happen. Um, and um, so he, he goes through this kind of progression again, and we've seen Paul do that before where um, he'll start with one question that leads naturally to another question, to another question, to another question. Really what he's trying to do is, is make the point. Um, and he's making the point here, again, going back to verse one, that his desire is that people will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He wants them to come to salvation. And, and so then, you know, throughout this passage, as he goes through the, the doctrine, through the questions, his, his point here is um, that, that faith comes from hearing God's work. The action component, if you are saved, if you have come to faith in Christ and, and trust him, you're going to take that word to, to others. And that's why in verse 17, then he says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of, of God. 
Okay, the, the word of God is the means by which God produces faith in, in others, then uses that as the conduit for, for his, his other blessings. Okay, that's why we share the gospel. That's why we, we share God's word. That's why we proclaim God's word. That's why um, we, we talk about his truth, truth with others. Uh, we don't just live our lives and, and hope that others will, will see us. And, and that's what kind of what, what Bill was saying this, was this morning was that uh, even in creation, even in seeing um, God's creation, okay, that's not enough to bring about saving faith. Okay. The, the, the means by which God does that is through the preaching, the proclaiming, the sharing of his word. Okay. And that's why we, we share the gospel. Okay. Living well is, is a part of that. That's a part of our testimony. But actually sharing the word of God is, is a critical component because faith comes through hearing the truth about Christ. And, and that is a, a critical uh, component. Um, and then he goes on, and, and the, the, the rest of the, the next few verses, I, I think, are, are very encouraging for us as well, um, when he says, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed, their sound has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. But I say, did Israel not know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me, and I, I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long, I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. And there's two truths there that I think can be very encouraging for us. Uh, Paul just went through and said, look, we need to share God's word. We need to proclaim the truth. We need to share the gospel. We need to, to pray for others that they will come and that they would uh, be changed and that they would be saved. Um, but then the point there is that in verse 18, even when people hear, does not mean that they are necessarily going to believe. Okay. Paul faced over and over and over again rejection. Jesus faced rejection from people. Okay, And so we, as we share God's word, as we share the truth of the gospel, are going to face rejection. Okay. And we need to be encouraged that we are to continue to proclaim God's word, and we need to trust that he is going to achieve his purposes. Um, and and that's, that's the point of those last few verses, that, that God will take our proclaiming of the word and our, our preaching and our teaching and our, our sharing of the gospel, and he will achieve his purposes with it. And we have to, to trust him to do his part with, with his word. I have a question. I'd like to know how many folks here have actually led somebody to Jesus Christ. Very good. Now, how did you do it? <laughs> did you follow a, a denominational form? Or did you open up scriptures and... Uh, share the scripture with them. I, I Roman read. Road basically is what I normally would use and I, I let them read it. I open them up to the scriptures and I let them read it. it it's a good good question. How do we do it? Because and that's that's Paul's point here. Because faith comes through hearing and uh, and hearing by the word of God. Okay, you're not going to lead someone to Repentance and to the true true faith, the faith in Christ apart from the Word of God, and so that's that's Paul's point um, in, in sharing the the Word of God. It, the specific, whether it's Romans Road, whether you go to Ephesians two, you know, however you choose to do it. I have an interesting example here. When I was in the Navy, coming home on a plane, and I sat next to a gentleman. <clears throat> and uh, he talked about a variety of things. And, and, uh, I brought up uh, Christianity and I asked him if uh, he knew Jesus. And said, well, yeah. So I went on to explain to him 
his lead and so forth. When we landed, uh, he said, now, Thomas, how about you come to my church <laughs> and share your oh, testimony wow. there? I just about fell over because I was trying to lead him to Christ. And he was, you know, he went through the process. And uh, then when we land, he, he asked me to come and preach at his <laughs> church. Needless to say, I almost collapsed because I thought I was reaching him with the gospel. And he already knew it. Well, I, I think, you know, I was just, I think it's in Matthew 7 where um, it says, not everybody will um, say, Lord, Lord, you know, um, and you'll hear those words uh, that are very scary. Um, apart from me, I never knew you. Um, mm -hmm. And that is like very, a very scary thought, you know. Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will end up the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And we've, uh, talked about that uh as we've we've gone through the through the first the first chapter of Ephesians. I think we'll 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 end end there um and uh we'll pick up next week we'll we'll go to, to James 2 we'll look at some of the difficult passages regarding uh faith and um and be back in, in Ephesians 2 uh next week. Yeah, so quick yeah. that's also why we need to read our Bibles because if you don't always have the Bible with you when you right. have this opportunity you need to know it. You need to know it. It's not a cookie, like Amanda just said. It's not. It's not a cookie cutter thing. It's, sometimes it's just simply this is what you got to do. I mean, this is what you have time for. Absolutely. And, and yep. so, what you really need to be in your Bible constantly. Yeah. And, and again, based on the hearing of the word there and yeah, exactly. sharing it. That's, yeah. That, yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly Paul's point. Um, so, um, all right, uh, Brian, you want to close with some prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your mercy, and especially your word, Lord, that we can uh, get it down deep enough so that we can spread it to others. Lord, help us this week to be uh, faithful and ready to share your word with those who need it. Love and guide us today, our teachers and our preachers, and uh, give us a great day in your name. Amen.